Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This weekend was DEF CON, and this is one of the world's largest hacker and information security events. It was one of my favorite things to do before I had kids. I mean, uh, you know, this is my badge from DEF CON 10, which is made from stamped metal because the badges are very important at DEF CON. But I have fond memories of driving to Las Vegas with hundreds of others of Bay Area hackers, learning about exploit techniques, social engineering, participating in coffee wars, and of course, playing Spot the Fed. This year, it's been rechristened as DEF CON Safe Mode. It's all online, and you can get all the uh, talks and presentations and challenges uh, on the internet. It still covers your basic hacking skills, as well as your know, lock picking, social engineering, biohacking, election security, and now there's a whole track devoted to aerospace security, with presentations on GPS spoofing, flight management systems, and hacking of satellites. And all this might sound scary to those of you who know how lives can depend on all of this stuff, but this is very much a program done in collaboration with official agencies who have an eye on raising awareness and improving security. And this year, a challenge was created in collaboration with the Air Force Research Laboratory, Hackasat, a capture the flag event based around hacking satellites. And while most of the satellites in the competition were earthbound, there was one part of the challenge which would run the winning solution on a real satellite in orbit. So Capture the Flag is a long-standing activity in hacker circles. It's a competitive activity where teams have to solve hacking challenges to score points. The flags are secret uh, numbers and information which have to be extracted and submitted to the judges to score points. For example, you might have to exploit bugs in a network secure ser uh, service to steal a file, or you might have to reverse engineering a piece of software, or crack a code, or crack a cipher. And these can be a lot of fun, and if you've ever played programming games like Shenzhen IO and thought that you'd like to go deeper, there are thousands of these challenges online for you to try, and there's even worldwide leaderboards for you know, once you get really good at this. So Hackasat was going to be run live over the weekend with eight teams hacking on actual satellite hardware and solving the challenges to take control of them. The three winning teams would share $100,000 in prizes. The finalists were selected during a qualification event back in May where uh, 1,300 teams, I believe, submitted uh, solutions. Uh, they tried to solve as many challenges as possible in 48 hours. The teams could have as many members as they wanted, but they needed at least one US citizen and they couldn't have sit uh, people from certain nations such as like North Korea. There were over 30 challenges to pick from. Some of them had cute space themed names like Spacebook or Phasers on Stun or Ground Control to Major Tom. And one that stood out for me was 1201 Alarm, which had an emulation of the Apollo Guidance computer. And the challenge was to use the disky interface to find the secret flag data in the AGC memory. The source code for all of the challenges are now available online if you want to take a look. And there are a few after action reports from teams who've participated and discussed their approach to problem solving. So anyway, the main event was this weekend and there were six stages to the challenge that had to be solved in sequence to progress. And in parallel, there was an on-orbit challenge which had to be completed to qualify for the prizes. Now, the teams were hacking on simulated satellite hardware. They didn't have physical access because, of course, these are satellites that are supposed to be in orbit and you're not getting hands-on things in orbit. The satellites were flat sats. So this is a common term for early prototypes of a satellite where the hardware is laid out in 2D you know, to make sure that your electronic works before you design the more compact form factor for flight. There were circuit boards with communications hardware, processors, sensors, attitude control hardware, and payloads. Everything you would see in a real satellite. And they were orbiting any big room on a carousel in pods and the flat sats were sitting on air supported bearings so that the attitude control systems on those boards would actually work to rotate the satellites. The boards had Spark processors and they ran NASA's core flight system software, which is an open source framework available for satellite developers. The very first challenge was a classic capture the flag hacker, hacker challenge. The teams had to get control of their ground station by hacking in via an insecure web application that was running on the same network as the ground station. 
This was Challenge Zero because it was kind of the bread and butter of Capture the Flag challenges. But the next few challenges were more like spacecraft troubleshooting you might hear about from Mission Control, figuring out how to establish stable communications with a tumbling satellite, and then figuring out how to fix the satellite to stop it tumbling and keep it pointing at the sun. By Challenge 3, we were getting into more hybrid challenges where um, the satellite, they were now wanted to get control of it, but the satellite had been hacked and it's running hostile code that's intentionally rejecting a lot of the commands. So the teams then had to figure out how to hack the hacked software, find exploits and get control of their spacecraft again. There were only two teams that managed to solve problem three in time. Uh, everybody else then got given a solution so that they could get for, uh, go on to challenge four, which was even harder, and that involved the, uh, bringing the payload online, which had a corrupted bootloader, and they had to figure out how to talk to it using GPIO and write a script to basically fix the bootloader and load the system. And ultimately, if they did all that, they then had to figure out how to actually command the satellite to rotate and take a photograph of the moon. And of course, this is definitely outside the realm of most uh, software hackers. So those were your basic scoring challenges, but the seventh on-orbit challenge was required, and that was to build a command sequence which would take a photograph of the moon using the real satellite in orbit. The exact satellite involved was kept secret. Uh, only the best solution would be sent, and the most accurate solution by a significant margin was one submitted by the team Poland Can Into Space. This make or break requirement had a huge effect on the results. Only six of the teams qualified, and Team Solar Wine, who ended up with the most points overall, they were eliminated from the prizes because they did not have a solution to this. The moonshot image was taken on Saturday night, and yes, the satellite was secret. However, during the proceedings, they played this uh, uh, analytical graphics uh, visualization of the command sequence. And I'm sure based on this, somebody could probably figure out which satellite it was. It's unlikely to be a particularly sensitive satellite. It's probably some air, you know, academy students thing. The camera on it is about as good as your average smartphone. But yeah, the winners, they all received a nice chunk of money for their hard work and skills. Flux Repeat Rocket won $20,000 for third place. Poland Can Into Space got $30,000 for second place. And PFS came first getting the $50,000 prize. Over the weekend, of course, the aerospace workshops were a lot bigger. Uh, lots of other people were attending the workshops. They learned new skills. And this is, of course, all a part of the drive by the Department of Defense to figure out how to make space systems more secure by learning from hackers who are interested in pushing the limits of information security. Last year, the same people brought computer hardware from F-15s, I believe, to be attacked by the community. And by all accounts, this was a pretty amazing learning experience for both sides. And you know, even before this, satellite hacking by potentially hostile forces may already have happened. Uh, ROSAT was an X-ray imaging satellite which may have been the victim of malicious activity that led it to pointing too close to the sun and damaging its camera. Or it might just have been human error, but your know, allegations remain. More recently, in 2007-2008, Landsat and TerraSat uh, satellites were interfered with, and there is a lot more evidence to support that being hostile forces. And your know, crew on the International Space Station have accidentally brought up malware to their laptops on memory cards, but these don't talk directly to the ISS, hopefully. So anyway, if you want to find out more about this, there are a bunch of videos over at the Air Force Research Laboratory YouTube channel covering the Capture the Flag Challenge, which is kind of fascinating. Since I used to watch this channel for things like videos on aerodynamics of hypersonics and you know, rocket science, uh, but now it's like capture the flag challenges. The main DEF CON site is obviously collecting all the presentations from the other tracks all over the weekend. This wasn't the only capture the flag event, by the way. In fact, it wasn't even the only capture of the flag event at the Aviation Village. They're, they were covering all aspects. There's a lot of talks in the Aviation Village as well. A great one on what human spaceflight has taught us about cybersecurity. And I'm going to say it's probably going to take me weeks to catch up on them all. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.